Welcome to worship. Whenever you're watching us, whether it's this Sunday morning or during the week, you are really welcome as you join with us. My name's Ruth Jeffries and I'm the minister here in Market Drayton Methodist Circuit. We're going to open our worship with some words from Psalm 63 and I invite you to join in with the words that are in capitals. You God are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you, in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. And so let's continue as our mouths proclaim the goodness of God. Let's sing together. Oh 
so we come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord our God, we praise you this day for all that you are and all that you've created, all that you've gifted to each and every one of us. You are worthy of all of our praise. And we don't just praise you, but we give thanks for who you are in our lives. We give thanks for the greatness of uh, your glory that surrounds us, the fact that you are a faithful God who has never, ever abandoned us. We praise and worship you. God, we thank you uh, that you did not just abandon us on this planet uh, as you created it, but you uh, set us here with purpose and uh, with, in relationship with one another and for relationship with you. God, we thank you most of all for sending Jesus to us, to this earth so that we could now read the stories of uh, how we are supposed to live, how, who you call us to be. Lord, we thank you that we have scripture in which we can explore those stories. We can understand something of what you want for us. But Lord, we recognise that we have, um, we have fallen short of all that you have for us, for all that you would desire for us. And so we just take some time in this moment's quiet to think of those things that we know uh, we need to say sorry to God for this morning. God, in your great love and mercy for us, you sent Jesus to this earth, not just to teach us and so that we could read stories of, uh, of all those miracles and those stories, and those teachings that he gave to us, but you sent him to save us, not to save us from this world, but to save us from ourselves and to save us from eternity in death, separated from you. When you sent Jesus, you sent him knowing that he would need to die in our place, battling not just the earthly death that we all face, but also battling the eternal death, a death which would mean that we are separated from you, Father God, our Creator. And so as Jesus gave up his life on that cross, he took on himself all of our wrongdoing, all of our sin, all of the shame that we feel for what we've allowed ourselves to become. He took all of that on him so that we might be free. And in turn, he gave us these words of utter grace when Jesus said your sins are forgiven thanks be to God for those amazing and simple words of forgiveness and grace Lord help us to be people who live in that grace not just for ourselves in relationship with you but with one another God, we thank you, moreover, that you did not leave Jesus in death, simply taking on the punishment that was due for us. But you had a bigger plan, and you brought him back from death to this earth to show us that death is defeated, that we didn't need to feel guilty because of what Jesus had done for us, for he was raised triumphantly to this life. But God, we thank you that Jesus did not um, uh, have to endure death again in, uh, through age as we do. But you raised him to eternity, the everlasting. 
Lord, help us to understand what it means to live in the freedom of knowing that following Jesus means following him into your presence at our life's end. Help us to live as people who are free, known, loved and blessed. And so we draw our prayers together with the words that Jesus himself taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I wonder what you do when you go into a tunnel. Now, there's lots of different kinds of tunnels, aren't there? When we uh, used to live on the Wirral, uh, to get to Liverpool, we'd have to go through what are known as the Mersey Tunnels, whether it was on the train, in which case you just get on and it takes you through, or you can drive, there's two tunnels you can drive through to get to the other side, to get from the Wirral to Liverpool or vice versa. Now, I have to say, when the girls were little, they really didn't like driving through those tunnels. And there's a reason for that. It's because to go underwater, you had to go down before you could come back up the other side. And in the going down, you could not see the other end. So we'd sing songs and we'd make them happy and tell jokes and all of that, trying to distract them uh, as we went through the tunnel. Now, it's not a particularly long tunnel. It only takes a few minutes to get from one side to the other and um, canal tunnels are a bit different, aren't they? Because usually they're fairly straight when you go through them. Even the, the longer tunnels, um, you can usually see a pinprick of light at the other end as you go through. So sometimes that's quite nice, isn't it? Just seeing that bit of light get bigger and bigger. Of course, there's fun to be had too when you go through a tunnel isn't there um I, I know that when we go when we walk along the canal as soon as we hit a tunnel what do we do we make lovely sounds so that it echoes everywhere so even in that slightly dark place maybe a little bit of a scary place you can make it fun kev tells me that when he's taken year fours to anglesey before uh, there's a tunnel that you have to go through as you go across to anglesey and uh, the year fours would often uh, um, try and hold their breath from one end to the other end of the tunnel i have no idea how long that tunnel is so maybe i should not advise you to do that um but uh, but just a way of kind of going how do we deal with the darkness we just hold our breath through it See, we can have fun in the darkness too. You see, see, we're often scared of the darkness, not being able to see the end. Corrie ten Boom, um, who was a fabulous, fabulous um, Christian lady, who uh, I recommend you go and listen to and find out about her story. Uh, she is quoted as saying this. When a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit still and trust the engineer. Now, of course, she's talking about a time where there wouldn't be lights on the train and going through a tunnel would mean that everything would go dark. But she makes a really important point, doesn't she? Sometimes we just have to sit still and trust the one that is taking us through that darkness but actually the darkness is not always a bad place to be if you go and find out a bit more about Corrie ten Boom you'll find out that actually sometimes the darkness is the safest place to be um, her book the story of her life is called the hiding place a dark place where she would hide uh, people and hid herself um, uh, from uh, during the war to keep people safe. You see, the darkness can be a place where we 
put to one side the things that are most challenging for us, most difficult for us. Sometimes it's quite nice just to go into that place where everything else is shut away, where there is darkness and you just can be there with your own thoughts. The things that are difficult are put to one side. But as Corrie reminds us, the engineer, the driver through that darkness is always with us and we can trust him. His name is Jesus. By his Holy Spirit, he is always with us, no matter what. The, the Bible reminds us of this in the Psalms, one of the most famous Psalms. And we read it often at funerals because it reminds us about God being with us. It says this, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. And so I wonder what you might do in the tunnel that you find yourself in at the moment. Maybe you don't really feel like you're in a tunnel and that's great. But with everything that's going on in the world, sometimes it feels like we're just kind of trudging through a tunnel and it's really hard to see that pinprick of light at the other end. So maybe you could have fun in the darkness, make it echo. But we need to always remember that no matter what, even in the darkest of dark places, Jesus is always with us. It's amazing what the creativity of lockdown spawns. And so right now we're going to bring you a brand new song written by two of the young people from this church. Um, who are going to share that with us now. Now, we'll put the words on so that you can appreciate them and see them. Uh, also, because it's quite fast, uh, you can have a go at singing along, but don't worry, maybe just uh, revel in this amazing creativity that they uh, bring to us. Uh, and knowing that the story of Jesus is being passed from generation to generation. Enjoy. Brilliant, wasn't it? We're going to have our readings followed by our address this morning. Readings read by Alice and following that, Mike's going to come and bring God's word to us this morning. The reading is taken from Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 to 14. Abraham tested. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. 
and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son, and the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He found his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from him your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram, caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram, and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord Will Provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Our second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Two different readings this morning, one Abraham and one Jesus words to the disciples. Um, but before we get to that, what have we been doing during this time of, of lockdown? I found myself looking back over some of the uh, musicals that we'd, we'd seen and heard and uh, going through them, probably brought on by the YouTube, The Show Must Go On, which was showing Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals. And in one of them, there was a song that touched me at the time and touched me now. So but I'll come back to that later on. Let's look at Abraham first. Abraham was a man called by God. He and his family with his father and that had moved out of Ur, uh, down on the, uh, the Euphrates and moved north, away from the irreligious area of city that they were living in. His father set up a, a home in Haran in the north, but Abraham felt he was called to, to go on farther, not to stay there. Something was calling him to go on into into something else into farther away and we see if we look at abraham's life and story that he traveled on into what was become canaan and palestine not stopping there because as yet he hadn't found a home he hadn't found his place went down into egypt got himself into quite a bit of trouble there and on the way back by trying to tell the, the rulers that Sarah at that time, his wife, was his sister. But they found out and Sarah was restored to him. But they were getting on in life now and they would settled back into Palestine. Sarah was barren, no child. So to carry on Abraham's life and his uh, DNAs, she allowed her maid to sleep with him and they had a son, Ishmael. But things weren't right there. And eventually, God blessed Sarah in her old age. Abraham was old, 100 years old. Gents, how would you fancy a new young child when you were 100? Don't look forward to it myself. And I don't think it will happen. But Sarah gave birth to Isaac. And Abraham rejoiced in this. He rejoiced that he had now the, his own seed to go forward, his son. God had promised him, made many promises on that journey. But here was the promise of, of, of a continuation of his life and his, his tribe and his descendants. 
But then we hear our reading. A reading that one day God called Abraham. Called him out from his nice gentle life as a herdsman with his cattle and his goats and his sheep. Told him to take his son and make a sacrifice to him. The sacrifice to God was to be Isaac. Isaac, the son that was to be his inheritance, to be his future, to be the promise that God had made him, made to Abraham, that his descendants. No, surely not. Abraham was being set to a time of trial. And so, but Abraham set off. A couple of servants to help, the donkeys to carry the load, the wood. Abraham with the knife for the slaughter and the fire for the, for the burning. Now Isaac was an intelligent child and once they had left the servants behind to go up onto the mountain that God had designated, he got a little concerned. Surely Dad should have brought with him some form of sacrifice. Little did he realise that he was the sacrifice to be. A trial, a real big trial of Abraham's life. Here was his inheritance. Here was his dependence on this young boy to carry on the work that God had set him. But Abraham carried on with the task. He must have been in his mind certain of what God had, him, had planned for him. And so they built the altar. They prepared the wood, placed it upon it, and bound his only son, the one who was to follow him, laid on that altar. It was a similar thing that most people around there would do quite often, sacrifice young children, the Canaanites, but not Abraham. As he raised the knife, God stepped in, released Isaac, and there God had provided a sheep for that sacrifice. Abraham was steadfast. He was certain that God had something for him to go forward to. I wonder what we're like in this, this virus at the moment. Have we thought of what God wants us to do? I said I mentioned uh, one of the musicals we'd seen. It was uh, Starlight Express, the stories of trains. But the one thing in it that stuck in my mind and sticks there now, and I think it's relevant to where we are now at the moment, part of one of the choruses states there's a light at the end of the tunnel. think at the moment we are in a dark tunnel. There is walls around us that we have to have had to put in place to keep ourselves safe. Some are going out to work, but still are having to put safety nets around themselves. But you ever thought about a tunnel? There's one thing certain about a tunnel. When you go in at one end, there's another end to come out. Doesn't matter how long it is, whether it's the Channel Tunnel, a short one on one of the railway lines, maybe the road tunnel under the Thames. You go in at one end into the darkness and you come out the other end into the light. And I think that we are in that tunnel at the moment, a very difficult time. And certainly Abraham was in a tunnel of darkness as he climbed that mountain. He couldn't see the other end of what was going to happen. So what about us? Can we see the tunnel? Are we in the tunnel? Well, we're not on our own in that tunnel. We have a guide with us. I was looking at many of the, the locomotives that run through most of the tunnels through the world. Each of them has a light on the front so they can see the track as they're passing through that darkness. 
through the passing through the darkness reminded me of a verse in Psalm, in, in Psalm 23 where God says he would be always with us when we walk through that dark valley of the shadow of death he'll be by our side and certainly during this virus it's a, a dark and terrible state for some people it's a time we don't know what's going to happen will it affect us will it affect someone we love but we have a light to guide us through this difficult tunnel we have Jesus by our side he said he would send the Holy Spirit to be our guide and our comforter Abraham couldn't feel the Spirit with him as he climbed that mountain but I certainly can myself as I go through this dark tunnel at the moment I know that I am being protected by God he's round here gather, uh, guarding me the tunnel might be dark there might be bends in the tunnel of difficult places it may narrow it may expand but I know God has a place at the end of the tunnel where his light will be for it shining ready for us to come out to come out and be the church he wants the other day I was in the zoom with the men from the churches together and John Bunch read from one of the prophets Jeremiah Jeremiah was talking to the Israelites who were in captivity they were in bondage and yet God promised them that one day they would come out of it and when they come out of it they will be a greater people when Abraham came down off that mountain he knew God's purpose was there he knew God's strength and I think when we come out of this if we look to God and trust in him we will come out stronger and wiser we will be able to carry out what Jesus said to the disciples at the end of his talk with them from the reading in Matthew we will be able to welcome anybody to join and find Jesus no matter what they are and if we offer them even the simplest of a cup of cold water we will be doing his work at this moment we don't be are not able to we have some of our people working in food banks others helping other that people get their shopping and things like that but there will be a greater call when we come through and we find that light at the end of the tunnel in the starlight express the poor old steam engine had so much around him to not allowing him to be as who he was the electric engines fast flashy the diesels power off of oil but the steam plodded along and we have to do that as we plod along now through this difficulty we have to trust like Abraham did that God will help us carry us forward and be there Jesus is our light through the tunnel of darkness he is our comforter our strength and when we burst out into the daylight of, away from the end of this virus he will there he will be there taking us forward just like he took the tribe of Israel out of captivity into freedom into expansion and I believe that we are being called on at the end of our time in, lock, in lockdown to go out into the world to heal the sorrow to comfort those that are sick to be with those that are lonely and to do God's work just as Abraham did as he left home and journeyed a thousand miles into Palestine may God be with you may your tunnel be light brightened by the light of Christ as we go forward to burst out at the end into the daylight and glory that God has set before us Amen
yourselves uh, to, in your own time. Um, last week we invited you to uh, find something to cuddle or to hug to remind us of God embracing the whole world uh, today. Now I know some of you found that quite helpful so if you want to do that again then feel free. Uh, otherwise this time is for you and God to share with your families or whoever you're with or just in silence as we bring those things before God that we uh, feel overwhelmed by at this time. And so I'll just start our prayers off and then leave you some space to be able to pray. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we bring before you those things that weigh us down, the things that concern us, the people and situations which overwhelm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear these our prayers.
And so in faith and in trust, we bring these, our prayers before you, our God, knowing in, that you hear every word, knowing that even before a word has formed on our lips, you know it fully. And so we pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.
And so as we close our worship once again this week, I just wanted to bring a little update. Um, Obviously, you'll have been watching the news or hearing that churches are opening for prayer and then potentially opening for worship as well. Uh, The guidance for the Methodist Church has not yet changed. And so our buildings remain closed for the time being. Uh, We're looking to think about uh, reopening for worship from about September, certainly not before September, uh, simply because if we did come, then we wouldn't be able to do a lot of things that we would want to do as we gather together, singing being one of those things. I can't imagine uh, us being in here and not singing, but that's that's a, a case for a debate in the future. For now, things remain the same for us. I know that some of the Anglican churches in the area are opening for prayer and we'll make sure that those uh, times and dates are advertised in the notice sheet and on Facebook and things like that if you wish to go and find that sense, that place of peace. For now though, my challenge to you is to continue to be disciples wherever you are. Um, I want to encourage you to find somebody that you can meet up with. Now we can do a bit more of that. Maybe it's in your back garden, maybe it's going for um, a walk, whatever that looks like for you. And I invite you to to do that um, as disciples. What does that mean? That means that when you meet, you might share some prayer concerns with one another. You might pray together. It means that you might be like, oh, I read this in my Bible reading this week or I really feel that God's been saying this or I'm really challenged by what God uh, is doing in all of this but sharing that with somebody else that's discipleship that's walking alongside one another but simply acknowledging the presence of God in your midst as you do so Uh, maybe you want to do that just in a very small group maybe two or three maybe you can kind of uh, go uh, go to the extent that we can do legally at the moment uh, and as the guidelines change we develop but this is about walking alongside one another it doesn't require me in a dog collar to do that for you you can do that with one another and so as you walk alongside one another may Jesus be a part of those conversations those relationships that are built and so that's what we offer to you today uh, and challenge you to in, uh, in some ways as well. And so may you go with God's blessing uh, as you go to do whatever you are this week brings for you, whether that's say, lots of the same or maybe something a little bit different this week. May you be blessed in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.